Good morning. Today is Friday, May 13th, 2022. There's an interesting passage in the Talmud. No obvious connection to our portion or any subject we're discussing, but we'll see how it connects. The Torah says later on in the book of Devarim, if a person should be involved in a, a crime and subject to criminal law, for certain kinds of punishment, there was a punishment called malchus, lashes, corporal punishment. And the Torah says, B'mispar arboyim yakenu lo yosef. A person had to receive 40 lashes, no more than 40. The Talmud explains, if a person had was convicted of the crime and the punishment is lashes, it was not that a more serious sin or crime had more lashes and a less serious had less lashes. There was one punishment, lashes. And lash was, was always the same number. It was 40. Torah says 40. But in each case, the Talmud explains, before this would happen, a doctor would um, would examine this person to make to see what is the maximum number they could have and not be harmed by it. And that was the number that was given. But the, the, the maximum that it could be was 40. So that's what Torah says. The Torah says, No more than 40. Then the, Talmud, then the Mishnah says, Well, first of all, that question is a little bit strange. How many lashes do we give? Well, I mean, the Torah says pretty clearly 40. The Torah says 40. So what kind of a question is it? How many? And the Mishnah's answer is even more interesting. 39. 40 means 39. It says 40, but it means 39. And then there's a whole discussion of how logically through interpreting the verses 40 should mean 39. I mean, 40 is 40 and 39 is 39. In any event, the scholars in the Talmud have a way to be able to understand that when the Torah says 40, it really means 39. It takes a lot of cleverness to be able to look at a verse. Seems to be pretty clear. It says 40, but come up with a line of reasoning. No, 40 really means 39. Says the Talmud in commenting on this passage of the Gemara, Amar Rava, Rava said, Kamatib Shoy Shar Insi, how foolish some people are. Dekaimi Mikami Sefer Torah, if they're, let's say, in Shul, and the Torah is taken out of the ark, and when the Torah is taken out of the ark, we all stand up in honor of the Torah scroll. We all do that. But we don't do the same thing when we're in the presence of a great Torah scholar. We're supposed to do the same thing when we're in the presence of a great Torah scholar, but we don't always do that. How could it be that we would stand up in honor for a Torah scroll and not stand up in honor for a Torah scholar? Because the Torah says you should get 40 lashes. But there was a great scholar who came along and said, take away one, only 39. So if anybody should have more honor showed to them, it should be the Gavra Rabbah, the great person who was able to interpret the Torah to make it instead of 40, to make it 39. That's deserving of honor. That's greatness. To have the intellect to be able to see when it says 40, it really means 39. That is really greatness. So if you're going to stand for a Torah scroll, which you should, you certainly should stand in honor of a Torah scholar. Okay. I heard this from Rabbi J.J. Schachter, and it concerns an insight of Rabbi Chaim Oza Grzynski, who was the Rav in Vilna before the Second World War, one of the greatest halakhic authorities and Torah authorities in the world at that time, and he asked the following question. As a general matter, in Talmudic literature, a person wants to state a premise, and then a person wants to 
invoke a verse that supports it. Usually, a person starts with Boratius and invokes the first verse that supports their position. The fact that when, excuse me, the fact that when um, the, when the Gemara says that the verse that shows this is that 40 could be 39, that's in Dvarim, that's in Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Torah. Asks Rav Chaim Ozer Gozinsi, why use that example all the way in the fifth book of the Torah? We've got an example right here in our Parsha, in the third book of the Torah, the Parsha of Amor. It's earlier in the Torah. It's in our parsha. The Torah says as follows: Usfartim lachem machas haShabbos. This is the mitzvah of counting the Omer. You shall count from the day after the first day of Pesach. Miyom aviachem es Omer at Nufa. From the day that we bring the barley offering into the sanctuary, into the Beis Hamikdash, Sheva Shabbosos to Mimis to Yena, seven complete weeks we should count. Ad Mimachras Hashabbos Hashviis Tisbru Chamishim Yom until we get to Shavuos, and Shavuos is day number fifty. Vehi Krafte Mincha Chadasho Lashem, and on that fiftieth day we offer a second offering of the first of the wheat crop. The Beginning is the first of the offering of the barley crop, and the end is the offering of the wheat crop. And we are told, Tisbru Chamishim Yom. We count 50 days. We count 50 days. Well, as every one of us knows, we do not count 50 days, we count 49 days. In fact, our rabbis. In the Midrashic leader teaches this. Tisperu chamishim yom tanya. Yachol yispor chamishim v'ikadesh yom hachamishim v'yachod. Maybe you think, based on the simple reading of the words, you count 50 days of the Omer and Shavuos is the 51st day because it says count 50 days. And then Shavuos is after that. Shavuos is a day later? No. Mana arboyim v'tisha v'kidesh yom chamishim you count 49 days. And on the 50th day, that is Shavuos. So here too, we have this idea that the Torah says 50. Through the uh, brilliance of the scholar who's interpreting the verses, we understand, no, it means you count 40 and 50 is Shavuos. So, why not use this as an example of a Gavra Rava? Why don't you say, uh, Rav Chaim Ozer Grzynski asked this question, why does the Talmud say the fellow who was able to interpret 40 to mean 39 is a Gavra Rava, a great, great person? But what about this person? He interpreted 50 to really mean 49. It's the same kind of mental gymnastics. It's the same kind of intellectual acuity. Why is the first one considered such a great person and the other person is just uh, considered a smart guy. So Rabbi J.J. Schachter explains a very important idea and it's something that is relevant to every one of us. You know, we know people who are smart, who are clever, A person who is smart enough, who is clever enough, who can interpret what seems to be clearly one thing and interpret it to mean another, that's smart, okay, that's intelligent. But a person who can interpret a number where it says 40 and to say that it means 39. And as a result of that, this poor person who is about to be lashed is going to receive less pain as a result. 
And let's keep in mind, we're not talking about a tzaddik who was arrested innocently. We're talking about a person who committed the crime. There were two eyewitnesses. He was given a warning. He heard the warning. He said, even though I know it's going to happen, I'm doing it anyway. We're talking about a pretty incorrigible person, not a good person. And yet, if somebody can come up with a line of reasoning that instead of lashing him 40 times, we're only going to lash him 39 times, that's greatness. That's a great person. That's a person that you should stand up for even before you stand up for the Torah scroll because that's a person who is looking to ease the pain and suffering of another Jew, even a Jew who deserves it. Greatness is not just mental agility. That's smart. That's clever. It's okay. Those are okay qualities. But to be great, you have to use smart and clever to show compassion, to help another person. That's why the second quote is used. The second quote in Dvarim, where the scholar is able to see the Torah says 40 lashes, and they hurt. And I am able to come up with an understanding to be able to say the real meaning is 39. And I've saved that person a little bit of the pain and suffering and humiliation that that person is going to feel. That's greatness. That's why the example is used. Yes, other people can take one number and interpret it into another number. Changing 50 to 49 is smart, it's clever. But changing 40 to 39 saves pain. And it is to that person who is deserving of greatness. Sometimes we pay attention and honor people who are smart, people who are intelligent, people who are curious, people who are clever. And those are good qualities. Those are okay qualities. They're okay. But unless they're being used in the service of some higher purpose, unless they are being used to serve other people, to help other people, to make someone's life better, then they remain very much a secondary quality. It's only when they are used to help, to show compassion, that's when the brilliance of the interpretation leads a person to greatness. My friends, I want to wish you a great Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.